This is Frank Taylor with another episode of Nature in Your Backyard. And today I'm in my backyard and my goal has always been to show you what kind of shows up. If you go outside your door today, what might you run into? What might you find? What flower might be blooming? What tree might be leafing out? What tree might have flowers on it? Or what insects are you going to find flying around or on your screen door? Well, when I walked out yesterday, I went to uh, do an episode on fleabane and attached to my pri tripod, sitting right on the top of my tripod that's holding my phone right now, was this giant insect. And he was huge. And look at the size of this guy right here. Uh, it's a really big insect. He's huge. And I had to do, I said, well, there's another episode. So what is a giant stonefly? Well, that's actually the, the common name of the organism, giant, because it's the biggest of all the stoneflies. And it's like, you know, almost two inches long, two and a half inches long or more. So that's really big for an insect. Stoneflies, when they're growing up, live in the aquatic environment. This particular stonefly lives in streams. And as a nymph or larva, they like fast moving water. And so today, um, after I found the, the stonefly that was on, on my tripod and I decided, well, I got to do an episode on stoneflies, I went down to the creek near my house and put a net in and collected some stoneflies that were in the creek right there. They like fast moving water and they like fast moving water because that fast moving water will bring food to them and it's also easier for them to get oxygen. Stoneflies have gills and they have to get oxygen from the water. And so if they're in fast current, they don't have to pump their gills or use their muscles and spend energy like a fish does. You watch a goldfish in a fish tank and it pumps its gills and you can see his mouth opening up and down like this. And he's passing water over those gills. And that takes energy to do that. But the stonefly sitting in that fast current, he lets, lets the oxygen and the water flow over his gills and he gets all the oxygen he needs without putting any effort into it. And so that energy that he saves, he can use that for growth. The stonefly, some of them are predators. Uh, some of them uh, eat decaying matter. Some of them actually eat leaves that fall into the stream in the fall. And we call them shredders and they tear that stuff up. Stoneflies will undergo um, 12 to sometimes 30 molts in their lifetime before they emerge as adults. They spend most of their life in the water as a larva and uh, emerge as uh, adults at some point in their life. I stonefly at this time of the year. And they'll uh, become winged adults and live just long enough to mate and lay eggs in the water. And those eggs will hatch out into the nymphs. So um, giant stoneflies, stoneflies, they're insects. Insects are arthropods. In order to grow, all arthropods have to shed their skeletons. So they'll shed their skeletons 20 or 30 times in their lifetime. It's pretty an amazing thing. And like a butterfly that goes from a larva to an adult stage, a butterfly will go in a cocoon or a chrysalis or a pupa and metamorphose into the adult. But these guys just climb out of the water on their last molt and emerge as adults. So it's a, a different kind of metamorphosis than, than what you're used to uh, thinking about. So in this episode, we're gonna take a close look at the adult and we're going to take a close look at the larva. Stoneflies. Here they come. Hang on. So here's my amazing stonefly adult. And I was thrilled when I first saw him. And I recognized him right away as a stonefly. They have a sort of prehistoric uh, look to them. 
They're dark and gray and brown, and uh, they have a unique vein pattern in their wings. You see that, that amazing, uh, very distinctive uh, wing pattern there. And he keeps his wings, uh, when he's not flying, folded across his back like that. And underneath you can see his abdomen. And he was slowing down pretty much. I think this guy might have been near the end of that life cycle. Remember that stoneflies live only a short period of time as winged adults. They live for a year or more in the aquatic stage. And this guy um, uh, was, was clinging onto my um, tripod. And you can see uh, he's got six legs. He's got two eyes, he's got a pair of an antenna, and those very distinctive wings folded across his back. Stoneflies aren't known as great flyers, and they usually don't, I don't even think they ever move this far from a stream. So people aren't very familiar with stoneflies because they, you just don't see the adults very often because they're short-lived, they stay near streams, they mate, they lay eggs, and then their life cycle is over. So the nymphs we can find more often and year round. So this was a stonefly adult. This is the adult of the giant stonefly. And they call them giant stoneflies because they're the biggest of all the stoneflies. And a lot of trout fishermen, if when they're fishing for trout and they see this um, insect flying around the stream and trout uh, coming up to the surface of the water to try to grab one, they'll tie a fly to look just like this. And a lot of trout fishermen are really good aquatic entomologists and they really know their uh, biology. <coughs> So here is the stonefly nymph. So this is an organism that lives in the water. And uh, nymph is another word uh, for larva that um, we use to describe the larvae of stoneflies. And you can see that, like insects, he has three main body parts. He has a head, the middle part that's called the thorax, um, and he has uh, uh, an abdomen and he's got two tails on it. Six legs, two antenna, and he's got three parts over his thorax where three pairs of legs attach. And this one is sometimes called the golden stonefly. It's also a very common stonefly, so it's often called the common stonefly. This is not the larva or the nymph of the giant stonefly adult that I showed you, but this is one of the nymphs that are in the stream right now. So um, you can recognize them by the three body parts, the brilliant markings on it. This one, the scientific name is called Acronuria. So to get a better look at this, if you go onto the internet and Google or search Acronuria, and I'll have that posted on, on my video here, um, you can look that up and get some better pictures of that. One of the things that this guy does, and right now I got him in a small container so that we can uh, get a good view of them. Uh, sometimes when they're in a little container like this, and that stream water is not flowing over their gills, they'll sit there and they'll actually do push-ups. And I'm hoping he'll do some push-ups for us. Um, and they do that with their legs, and it looks just like a push-up. They move their body up and down in place to increase the uh, flow of water over their gills. Now in a stream, remember that these guys like to live in that fast water so that the water will pass over their gills and bring them all the oxygen they need without having to work for it. But when I put them in a small container with still water, uh, he'll sometimes start to do push-ups in order to uh, get more oxygen over his gills. And of course, I always try to put these back, back in the stream where I found them just as soon as I can, as soon as we're finished looking at them. This is another species of stonefly. It looks very different from the other stonefly, but what they have in common, again, is the three body parts, two antenna, six legs, and an abdomen with uh, two tails on it. So there is a uh, different stonefly species. This one is called the roach-like stonefly because it, well, it kind of looks like a roach. It doesn't really look like any of the other stoneflies. 
and it has some very big shields on it um, over the thorax so it has this very armored sturdy look and you can see it's tapered down so it's kind of streamlined so a lot of times this guy will cling onto rocks in the current so that again the oxygen can flow over his gills and he can collect food off the surface of the rock or food that is brought to him in the current so this one is called the scientific name is peltoperla or peltoperlidae and it's called the roach-like stonefly armored and living in fast water and here's another view of the acronuria stonefly and that you can see the brilliant markings on that and do you see the little white tufts next to his abdomen those are gills that he uh, breathes with and you can see that's another way to identify this guy so you look for those three brightly colored brightly marked yellow shields on his back and tufts of hair or fur underneath which are actually gills but those little tufts between his legs are a good identifier for this species and you can see he's very very active probing his environment looking for a way to escape so as soon as i finish this i'll take these guys back down to the stream and we'll let them go today we had an opportunity to look at some stoneflies and stoneflies came up because well one landed on my uh tripod and so i felt like i had to do stoneflies today so uh there are a lot of different aquatic insects and there there's mayflies stoneflies caddisflies damselflies crane flies all kinds of different aquatic organisms with all sorts of different body shapes and plans and adaptations some live in fast currents, some in slow. Some are swimmers, some are crawlers. And they're really cool to look at. This is a really great book. If you got a birthday coming up or special occasion, you might want to get this. This book is called A Guide to Common Freshwater Invertebrates of North America. And it's written by uh, Reese Vochelle. Reese Vochelle was my professor of aquatic entomology, which is a study of insects, when I was at Virginia Tech getting my master's degree in zoology with a concentration in aquatic ecology and environmental impact assessment. So this is a really great book that tells you all about the different insects, and he's got great pictures in here of all the different kinds of things that you can find, and I use this book a lot. Remember, if you want to go look at for some aquatic insects, I'm going to do some more uh, episodes on the different ones. Remember, this is my favorite thing to have, an enamel pan. And how did I find these stonefly nymphs today? I took a little aquarium net. I went into a riffle. I rubbed my hands and kind of disturbed the, the leaves and stuff in there and just let the current sweep things into my net. Then I dumped some leaves that I picked up in there. And sometimes you can just grab a handful of leaves in your hand and throw it in a pan like this, put in some water, and then wait and just let things settle down and get a stick or your fingers and probe around there. You'll start to see things swimming around and moving. And that's just a great way to find it. You can use a net and let the current move, you know, sweep stuff into the net if you're in a stream or take the net if it's in a pond or lake and scrape the bottom and pull up some of those leaves. Most of those guys are sitting in that leaf litter and if you put them in a pan, you can see them where when you look, just look in the net or just look at the you know, pack of leaves in your hand, you won't, you won't really find anything. That's a great way to, to find aquatic insect. Remember, I always want you to go outside, see what you can find, turn over rocks in a stream, pick up the rocks, look at the surface of them, grab a pack of wet leaves from a pond or lake or stream, throw them in a pan like this, and put some water in there and see what you can start to move around. Remember, fact check me, Google stuff that I tell you, look up stoneflies, look at pictures of stoneflies, enhance your learning, learn more by accessing the internet. And remember that, you know, once you get the name of an organism, that opens up a whole big door to, to finding out what is the story of that organism. Thanks for watching today. We'll be back again soon with our next episode of Nature in Your Backyard.